Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So as you can see here, we have a super um, different video going on today. We're going to be doing, we're going to be doing a mukbang story time. So we're going to explain how we met and because I know a few people are super curious about it because it kind of came out of nowhere. Like one post we were together and then the next post we were engaged and all of a sudden we're married. So I figured that we could explain how we met, how things went, and we have a seafood boil. So we're gonna be eating while we explain our story. So I'm super excited and we're so hungry. So we're just gonna jump right into it. So, starts off, we both worked at the same hospital. Both For did. the same hospital. For the same hospital. She worked in the main hospital and then I was out in a doctor's office that was through the hospital. And I always had to call her in regards to our patients and scheduling any kind of procedure, like an MRI or anything. And one day I just started calling and how she would answer is scheduling this is Zoe. And I just, I loved her voice. It was just- I have just such a cute voice. It was so cute and sexy <laughs> and I just, I loved it. And so I didn't know her. I didn't know what she looked like or anything, but- No, we had no idea. We'd never- walked past each other because I worked at the hospital and like you said, he worked at a clinic. So they're not connected at all. Like they're in the same, like they're not in the same building. So we never ever walked past each other or anything like that. So we would answer the phone with a joke. We would, t we would tell like popsicle stick jokes. Like just the cheesiest, like, if you were the CIA and you were listening to it, you would be cringing hardcore. Like they were the stupidest. I just wanted to make her laugh. Yeah, so that's how we would start out our conversations. And I thought I was, I thought we were both flirting. And I was like, wow, I think she likes me. I ha was so oblivious to everything. I'm, I um, just thought he was really funny. And he was fun to talk to. And eventually we added each other on social media. And so we kind of got to see what each other looked like, like our faces. And then one day um, he had to bring up money for the hospital from the doctor's office. And he, would, he was gonna be walking into a section that I walked past to leave work every day. And so I was like, oh, maybe I'll see you. So I, it's the end of the day. And so I'm at that part where I know he's gonna be to drop off me. And so I kind of like pass time by making conversation with somebody. And it was like, I feel like forever. Cause I had to walk from my office around another building to the parking lot. He was taking his time. And every time the door opened, I'd like look over and be like, is that him, is that him? And all of a sudden, finally he comes walking in. I walked right past her on purpose. Right past me. On purpose. And he goes into the room and the person that I was talking to sits in the room and she sits at a window. So I, look at him while he's dropping off the money in this room. And I'm like, you're just gonna walk right past me. And I knew I was gonna walk right back. So I was like, I'll, I'll come coming back. So he walked me to my car and we'd been like, we were like best friends for like a year after that. Like a whole year. We were like super good friends and I, 
I confided in him a lot. I found a lot of need to talk to him because he was super easygoing and he never made me feel dramatic in my issues. He was always there for me. And I was so, just trying to be a nice guy. <laughs> a little Wild. filled. Yeah. While still flirting, of course. So I am. Not everyone. <laughs> I don't really want to bring bad names to anybody or bad juju or talk bad about anybody. But I was in a not so very good, that's fine. I was in a not so very good situation. It was just a toxic place for me and the person I was living with. So one day he, moral of the story, he literally buys, gets me an apartment and is just like, you're you coming, need, you need you're leaving. Move. You're leaving and um, I will take care of you. And he did. That was in January. And we were, and he proposed in February of the same year. So a month later he proposed. <laughs> you good on you? <laughs> oh my gosh. This was, February 2018. So I decided since I was in a kind of bad situation prior to that, I was like, Got you. <laughs> I was like, let's get married October 2019. And he was like, no, no, no. You're I'm my wife. Wait. I'm not waiting now. You're gonna be my wife. You're gonna be my wife now. And so we ended up So getting... we went to the courthouse that day. No, 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 no. I wish. No, no, no. Um, but we also have red lobster biscuits. Red lobster biscuits. I we have a feast. I made them. I got seafood boil sauce. Homemade. Homemade. A whole lot of butter. Like she said, she wanted to get married the year after. Like a year and eight months. And I didn't want to wait that long. Like she said, I just, I wanted to marry her. Um, there's no point in waiting how I feel. I know other people have their reasons of waiting, whether it's financial, they want a really good venue or whatnot, but. We got married in our backyard. We had it all planned. It was like, you know, we're not gonna wait. Um, and so in June of that year, my family had a vacation plan to Mexico to a resort down there. And so we were like, you know what? Why don't we get married before the trip? And this is where some people will probably be like, you went on your honeymoon with family? It was literally- We went- The best idea. On our honeymoon with our family and another family to an all inclusive resort. We had our own place. Had our own room. Obviously we oh, didn't wow. share rooms with his family. So. Uh, locked out of our room one night. Took him like two hours. Their cards weren't working in the, the key thing the too. The, yeah, the key was so not they, working. Even for them. So they had to go around outside, get a ladder. Climb so, up our balcony. We were on the second floor? Yeah, we were on second the floor. second floor. So no, third. Second. Yeah, we were on second the second floor. floor. And so when they climbed up our balcony, they came out of the room next to ours. It's like 11 o'clock at night. They we went climbing family. through someone next. It was just a couple I thought knocking on their balcony. Knocking on their balcony. Imagine getting up at 11 o'clock at night on the second floor and someone's knocking on your balcony. Your balcony. And, it's and it a was the manager from of the, the front, <laughs> at the front desk and you're all. Yeah, I felt so, so bad for him. He so. went back out, went through the next one. Um, Came through. And he said, cause we had a tour the next day and he was like, oh, this is gonna be fixed by the time you get mm -hmm. back from your tour tomorrow. They said, when you, when you t what time are you guys leaving? Okay, they'll come at this time. So you guys aren't there and they'll fix your, the key things. So we're like, all right, sweet. I forget what we did that day. We went to the, the Mayan tour. Yeah, Mayan tour. Um, In Tulum. And we came back, lo and behold. It, it was not it was fixed. Stones. On the way to it, and I said, are we good? Like, I I did not want to wait two hours. Are we good? And he said, you're all good. I got there, 
It didn't work. I was, I was furious. So, so mad. I stomped back to the front desk. And this is like a huge resort. So it's not just a quick. We went to a cenote right before. Mm -hmm. We had just went to a cenote. We were dripping wet, soaking wet. We just wanted to go take a shower. We were so tired. Like literally we left at like seven o'clock in the morning. We got back at like. It was dark. It was I Yeah, it was that. over like 12 hours that we were gone on this tour. We were so, so tired. And so to know that when you come back, all you want to do is just take a shower. We stunk, we were sweating. It was so gross. Like we were, it, I mean, it's Mexico and you're on a tour where you walk. Like the tour was so long, we ended up having to ride bikes mm -hmm. because it was so long. And it was, we were so sweaty. And we, like I said, we swam in a cenote. So cenote. It was, it's like a lake underground. And so I go back and I'm like, dude, it's not working. So they come out. They realize, oh yeah, it's not, it's not working. So, said the greatest words ever. We're gonna upgrade you. So we had what, three more nights left? Yeah, we had like, I think two or three. And so, they come, they're like, all right, just put your stuff in your suitcase. They came, packed us all up, took us to the third floor, or the third story. A junior suite. Junior suite. Had a right living on, room. Had a living room, two bathrooms, a wraparound balcony. A dining room. A separate balcony. The uh, bedroom was bigger than this whole apartment. Yeah, walk-in closet, walk-in bathroom. I, mean, I guess there's walk bathrooms. Walk-in walk -in. shower. It was fabulous. It was so nice. So we invited everybody on our last night there to come up to our beautiful suite. We've, our Yeah, our apartment at the time was a munchkin compared to compared to compared our to our junior suite. suite that we were staying at at a resort so i mean that says something and um it was just a brief honeymoon story yeah, yeah a lot of people were like all right uh, you guys got huge... together in january proposed in february got married in june so, yes but the it's back quick. story is like, we knew each other. We were friends for so long. It wasn't like we met in January, proposed in, or got engaged February, married in June. No, it was. it's like, we literally became each other's best friends. And when you do it that way, you've already seen each other at your worst. Like, I saw her at her worst. Like absolute worst. Like if you can love someone through all that, then you know that you're gonna love them at their best. And literally, I've never in my life been better than what I am today because of him. Aww. Like, he made me my best. He seen me at my worst and he made me my best. Whenever I say, because of his career choice, that I knew I married a hero, that is exactly why I knew that I married a hero. Whether I knew what it was gonna be, whether I knew, I mean, I didn't know we were gonna go down this <clears throat> route. Mr. Police Officer, <laughs> but I knew it was gonna be, I knew he was gonna do something with his life, so I had to accept it. And from and the beginning, I mean, every relationship has its ups and downs. Oh yeah. It hasn't just been this walk through the park. No, not at all. I remember, she's a strong, independent woman. So, I... Yeah, it was after I got out of the apartment, she had a car that we were driving, and the tire blew. So in the middle of the highway, I didn't hit anything. Like destroyed. the weirdest thing I have ever seen. Like it looks like someone was in the middle of the road slashing people's tires. And um, we'll, put a, we'll put a picture. It's gonna cover her. Yeah, we'll put a picture on me of my beautiful right tire. See the tire? <laughs> Horrible. Horrible. So he puts his donut from his car onto mine because I don't. That was my spare that popped. That was my spare tire. And so I didn't have a donut. And so he put his on mine and we left it because we had a long drive to his parents' house. And so we decided to leave it in town at this church and we go to Chipotle. Sorry, we go to Chipotle. We got dinner. And he says, as sweet as can be, I'm gonna take your car I'm gonna Tomorrow, call him. I'm gonna call him to work 
And tomorrow I'm gonna take your car to go get all new tires. I'm gonna get your car aligned and I'll fix it. And you know, a normal woman in need that has no other help would be like, oh my gosh, that's so sweet. Thank you so much. Oh, you're nope. my hero. Nope. No. I blew up. I'm gonna say the nice version of what I said because it wasn't very PG-13, but let's just say that I said, screw you, you're not gonna take my car. I do not need your help. I'm a strong, independent woman who don't need no man. And... Version not of like a fight. No, he did not say anything back to me. It wasn't like... But I didn't really give her a choice. I said, I'm taking your car. I have the money. I'm fixing your car. Yeah, so... It just took a lot for me to be able to accept that he was willing to help me and he wasn't there to hurt me. It wasn't always beautiful and this loving, caring story where I just got sweeped off my feet and everything was beautiful after that, all rainbows and butterflies and... No, she crashed my car two weeks ago. Sorry. Our car. I just had it before we got together. It happens. Life happens. She thought I was so mad at her. Mm-hmm. I was like, it happens. We make mistakes. Just a car. Glad she was okay. And the other person was okay. So, yeah. This so, truck was untouched. We had other people. But. And I was raised to help, help people. Help people. Even Just, when they're stubborn. Still are. Yeah, he does not have it easy. He does not have it easy. I don't know why he's still sticking around. So I told you I wasn't gonna eat on my trip. Yeah, I have no idea why he's still sticking around, but I'm very happy that he is. Yeah, he does not have it easy. He does not have it easy. I don't know why he's still sticking around. I'm very happy that he is. And we have a very good life together. We're happy. Very happy. She sometimes hates me. No. I hope that this answered any questions from either our sides, either of our sides of like friends or family members who didn't really understand where either of us came from. Cause I know that I still get questions of bleeding. Like, how it happened so quick. And I get some people, it's, hey, you need to be engaged for two years. You need to live together before. You need this, you need that. I get it. It is what it is. Every family's different. Every person's different. And I get that it's scary for some people to think that we were really only together for a month. But when you're friends for so long, you really understand that person. I mean, so, yeah, you don't have the living together part in there or the pet peeves, how they live or- We definitely are still learning each other. Yeah. Actually, I think we have it down to a T now, mm -hmm. but- There's still some things where it's like, that's right. They are like that. Yeah. They do, you do like, like that. Or mm -hmm. you don't like that. Yeah. For the first six months after we got married, it was not pretty at all. Well, most of the time. There was ups and downs, like I said. I was always very angry towards you, though. And I think it was still just me trying to understand that he's there to help me. And to understand that I'm not going to be independent anymore. And so I kind of just took out that on him. Which wasn't his fault, obviously. <laughs> but... I think even up until we got Binks, I was... Or Bunny. That day. That day, the D word was thrown around. D word as Not in, like I threatened it, but it was like, if you keep taking things out of me when I'm just trying to do the right thing... We're not going to last. We're not going to last. Mm -hmm. and things we're not going to change. Make it. And it wasn't just her. It, I, still, I still have plenty of things I need to change and learn and get better at, but no. 
25 years of marriage, my grandparents, you know, they're, they still have their ups and downs. It's a part of marriage and being together. You can't expect two completely different human beings to come together and to be perfect, like perfect, <laughs> completely, <laughs> com completely perfect to where there's no issues, there's no disagreements. You're gonna have disagreements because you are two completely different people. And it's okay to have disagreements. Like, it would be not very normal. And we don't really fight anymore now, but we do still have disagreements. And as long as you take it like an adult, then just our story, that's us. Maybe we'll A do- A whole lot of- here, here, this, this, that, that, but. It's like all over the place, but. Food was good. <laughs> yeah, the food was very good. I definitely overcooked Hopefully you ate something too during this, cause I know me, if I'm gonna eat something, I gotta put a video on or I will have my food cold while I'm scrolling and be like, no, no. All right, that, you know, that's a solid 10 minute video. Yeah, it has to be a long we'll put enough. it there and I'm gonna start eating. So hopefully you already finished your food already. And hopefully it was good, because this was bomb. Or maybe you guys looked at us eating and got hungry and hopefully grabbed a snack. Dungeness crab legs, shrimp, corn, lemons, lemons red cheddar bay biscuits, red lobster biscuits, seafood boil sauce, a whole lot of butter. I got a lobster tail. Kool-Aid. Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. Creatine. You want creatine in that? No, I don't know. You made it for me. No, you didn't. He's drugging me. Uh, subscribe. Subscribe to our channel. Hit, hit the like. Hit that like button. Post notifications. Ding, 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 ding. Comment what you guys want to see next and give me some video ideas. We do have a lot of videos coming. We have a lot of things planned. Ideas, just actually executing them or making them good enough to her standard. Your standard. Yeah, your guys' standard. <laughs> we definitely want to just make it interesting for you guys. So if you guys like, comment and subscribe and comment what you guys want to see, then we will give to you what you guys want. So anyways, thank you for coming. I hope you guys had a good time watching. See you later. Bye.